Good morning, friends. Good morning, brethren. Praise the Lord. I'd like us to look um, at our topic this morning, which is stand. And I chose for my text um, a, ch a chapter which we are all familiar with, um, Ephesians chapter 6. We'll read from verse 10 to verse 16. I request that um, the person who is on the screen will be able to log it in so that uh, we can see it. Ephesians chapter 10, chapter 6, verse 10 to 16. I'm going to ask my daughter here, Tendo, to read it for us. Ephesians 6, verse 10 to 16. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you may take stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything to stand, stand firm then, with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted, with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all these, this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. That's the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Okay, in the seven verses that we have just read, Paul uses the word stand at least four times. Is emphasizing an action of great resolve. When he, Paul, when he asks us to put on the whole armor of God, nobody puts on an armor unless they are prepared for something. In this case, we are prepared for war and evil forces. We know that uh, we are at war with negative forces. We know we are at war with many things that seem to um, and so I wanted to define the act of standing. Um, it is a posture of alertness. It is something that you cannot do when you are not alert. Otherwise, you'd fall. We stand for national anthems when they are being played or sung. We stand to honor people when we are greeting them. We stand to receive a guest. We stand to honor important people in different places. We stand out of respect. Standing also defines the length of time that something has lasted. Somebody can say it has lasted, uh, uh, it has stood the test of time, yeah. Uh, that someone has fulfilled a role, um, an upright position, standing has an element of permanence. When we stand or take a stand, we adopt a particular attitude towards a matter or an issue. Standing firm, like Paul has told us, requires us to be steady and to be sure. We need to be steady and sure in our faith. We need to be steady and sure, and we should not be wavering. We need to be steady and sure, and we should not be stumbling. And then we should be ready and steady and sure, and we should not be easily moved. And I think that fits in well with our theme for this year, the unshakable, which is found in Hebrews. I want to think about a few people in the Bible. I know there are many who stood, but I'd like to think about a few that we will talk about here. Lot. My brother Lot, our brother Lot, he lived in Sodom, which was an obscene city. But he trusted in God and he refused to be moved 
into un, to, to be wooed into ungodliness. Lot stood his ground. We look at the apostles in the New Testament. Many of them sealed their faith with their lives because they were committed to preaching the gospel. So they stood firm on what they believed. We have a very good example of the martyrs who stood firm against the powers and rulers of ungodliness, the martyrs of Uganda. So standing is required in these days because evil is abounding. The Bible tells us in Matthew chapter 24, verse 12, that in the last days, the love of many will grow cold. And therefore, we need to take up the whole armor of God. And I like the emphasis that Paul uses. He says, so that we'll be able to stand. And after we have done this, that we stand. That means that after we have put on the whole armor of God, then we go out of our way and again you to, to stand. There are a few things that we find in this scripture that we have just read. And I wanted to point out the key issues. When Paul tells us to stand therefore, he wants us to stand for truthfulness. In a world and an age where truth is exchanged for deceitfulness, we must stand firm on the truth and be willing to be counted in the minority. The world we are living in these days, really, when you tell the truth, you are an outcast. When you tell the truth, you are a social misfit. But the Bible tells us that the truth will always set us free. The truth will build our character. So if we want to be people who are, who are unshakable, who have a strong resolve, then we need to have the belt of truth tightly around our waists. That is one of the pieces of the armor of God. And I do hope that we will be able to read Ephesians chapter 4, verse 25. I will just give the quotations and people will take, a, take time to read these later on. Paul also tells us to stand therefore. And one of the things he tells us is righteousness, the breastplate of righteousness. The quality of being morally right or justifiable is righteousness. This means that our ethical conduct is unquestionable. That should be our desire, and that should be our ultimate goal, to live righteous lives that honor the God we profess. It's one thing to say that you are a Christian. It's another to live in righteousness and to display Christ in the way you live, in the way you behave, in your morals, in your conduct, in your character. I'd like us to read. If you can please put up Psalm 1, Psalm 1, we'll just do verses 1 and 2. Psalm 1, verses 1 and 2. It says, can somebody read it for us? I have a problem with my sight in the morning. Can somebody read that for us? First, Psalm 1, verse 1 and 2. Timothy? Um, let me read it. Psalm 1, okay. verse 1 and 2. Yes, please. Blessed is the one who does not walk in the state with the wicked or stand in the way that sinners take or sit in the company of mockers, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord and who meditates on his law day and night. Amen. Blessed is the person who does not stand in the counsel of the ungodly or sit in the seat of scoffers, but their delight is in the law of the Lord and that he meditates on day and night. Righteousness requires that we do not stand with the mockers. Righteousness requires that we stand in the place of godliness so that we are 
people who are who have chosen to be different. We'll also read Philippians chapter 1, verse 27. We'll go on. Uh, please read that in your own free time. Paul also demands that we stand therefore with feet. The, our feet should be the should have the readiness of preaching the gospel of peace. I don't know, my friends, this morning, is your life depicting the gospel of peace or is your life depicting strife? The world has put us in a place where we are always struggling, striving. Do people find solace in being in fellowship with you? Are you preaching the Christ-like character of peace? Peace is something that uh, brings, uh, re releases tension and brings calm in a room. I know there's a song that we have sung before that says, Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there's hatred, let your love increase. <clears throat> I pray that even as we interact with people, our lives will be so filled with peace that it will be able to be given to everybody who encounters us. I like the benediction that we hear almost every day when we attend services or we, when we are in the presence of priests that God has ordained uh, to lead us, it says, the peace of God, which passes human understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. That is a prayer that is made for us on a daily because <clears throat> Because God is aware that peace must prevail in our very lives for there to be uh, concord. We must display, not only display, but live lives that are peaceful. Please read 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58. Paul also encourages us to stand therefore with faith. Faith is believing that Jesus is Lord, that he's God's son, and that in him we are bought, we are cleansed, we are sanctified. 1 Corinthians 16, 13 tells us that. So faith is being sure of your relationship with God. Faith is being prepared to meet God, not only as a judge, but as a friend. I know that we prepare for so many things, like I said at the beginning. We prepare for weddings, we prepare for career, we prepare for education, we prepare to travel. We set aside even uh, what we will wear on those occasions or what we will need. But we need also to be prepared to meet God. And if we don't have faith, we will never be able to see God. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. He who comes to God must believe that he is, and he rewards those who diligently seek him. So let's be prepared to meet God through repentance. Let's be prepared to meet God through faith and through confession. But continually also let us be prepared to meet God as we search our souls, because the storm of judgment is fast approaching and it needs to find us when we are firm in our faith. Paul also tells us to stand therefore with a helmet of salvation. Now a helmet not only uh, protects us, but it protects the, the, the faculty which is most important on the body. Salvation is of absolute importance. Walking with God on a daily, <clears throat> excuse me. Abraham walked with God. I'll give a few examples here. Abraham walked with God and he was called a friend of God. I'd like to ask you this morning, are you a friend of God? Because if you are a friend of God, then you need to stand. David in the Bible, he was a shepherd boy, a shepherd boy but he walked with God. And he was able to train his life 
to be in the presence of God. So when the crisis came, he was able to stand against the lion. He was able to stand against Goliath. He was able to stand many other atrocities because he was a friend of God. He had understood God on a very personal basis. And we see it in the Psalms as he writes, this is a person who really knows and has a relationship with God through salvation. I think about Daniel. Daniel had a godly heritage and he walked with God. When he was faced with lions, when he was faced with the furnace, he was untouched. He was protected. He refused to compromise. He stood his ground because he knew where his salvation came from. Salvation strengthens the inner being as you walk daily with God. When crisis presents itself, you will not fret, you will not fear, but you confidently have the strength to stand for Christ. It also tells us in that passage that we read that we need to stand therefore with the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. The word of God is living and active. So we need to fortify ourselves with the word of God so that when the time comes, we will have the word of God firmly, not only on our lips, <clears throat> but also in our hearts. <clears throat> I like the navigators for what they taught us when we were growing in, in spir spiritually. It talked about the word hand, which, which, which emphasizes five things. We hear the word of God, we read the word of God, we study the word of God, we memorize the word of God, and we meditate on it. When we have those five things continually, <clears throat> excuse me, in our lives, God will enable us to have his word deeply rooted in our lives, and we will find it easier to practice what we read to practice what we study, to practice what we memorize, to practice what we meditate. The word of God is living and active. Ephesians 6.14 tells us that the word of God is truth. Psalm 119 verse 105 tells us that the word of God is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. <clears throat> so remember the, that word had excuse me, to hear, to read, to study, to memorize and meditate. I used to find it difficult to memorize God's word, but I have found that the verses that I memorized over the years have, have helped me in times of crisis when I didn't know what to do. The Lord will bring to remembrance some of the words that I memorized and they've been a comfort to me. Paul tells us also to stand therefore <coughs> in prayer. So we need to I'm sorry, that was an interruption. Paul also tells us to stand therefore in prayer. Let's fortify ourselves with prayer and Ephesians 6 18 talks about it. Let's pray and, and persevere in prayer. Let's rediscover the power of prayer. Let's understand the value and the necessity of prayer. Let's direct our communication with God because prayer is direct communication with God. You're able to tell him everything that you need, everything that you desire everything that you're struggling with, emptying ourselves before him through prayer. Uh, prayer always, if we look at scripture, throughout the scriptures, prayer always preceded every great victory and every great triumph. So we should not neglect this act of prayer. It is so important for our lives. It causes us to be in okay direct communication. Uh God. Thank you. Um, 
I don't know if we have heard of the five finger prayer. I'd like to remind us of how to pray. Sometimes we wonder how to pray. But let's think about, of, uh, about our hand and think about the thumb. The thumb is one that reminds us to pray for our friends and our family. Then the pointer finger reminds us to pray for leadership, for pastors and teachers. Then the middle finger reminds us to pray for our government and our leaders, the president and other people like that. And then the ring finger reminds us to pray for the sick, those who are hurting, those who are suffering in many ways. And we are never short of such people. And the pinky finger reminds us to pray for ourselves and for our personal needs. So when we remember those things, we will be able to always have a reason to pray to always have something to present before God. Standing firm is not an easy thing, but it will always bring us tremendous benefits when we persevere by standing firm. What will happen when we employ what we've just talked about, when we employ the armor of God, we will be strengthened. We will have spiritual muscle, we will be secure. We will be firmly stood on the precepts and the principles of God's word, on prayer, on supplication, and we will not be wavering. We will also be purified because God purifies us as we stand firm. He shows us areas in our lives that we need to improve that the things that we need to throw away, the things that beset us, the things that weigh heavily on us, we will set aside and the Lord will purify us. It also enables us when we stand firm to draw closer to God because we know we are at attention and are listening in to the authority that gives us the marching orders. We will have self-control. Life will not be uh, scattered. We will be contained because we have the spirit of God living and working in us. And by that, I'll also say that we will have spiritual maturity. But above all, we will wear the crown of victory. Because when we stand, I like that song that we sing. And uh, I'll read it here. Uh, I'll read a verse here. Stand up, stand up for Jesus. Stand in his strength alone. The arm of flesh will fail you. You dare not trust your own. Put on the gospel armor. Each piece put on with prayer. Where duty calls or danger, be never wanting there. I'd like us to sing that. Stand up, stand up for Jesus. Stand in his strength alone. The arm of flesh will fail you. You dare not trust your own. Put on the gospel arm. Each peaceful when duty be never wanting there. The next verse tells, tells us that the strife that we are going through is not going to last forever because the battle is the Lord's. He is going to be able to give us the victory. He says, to those who vanquish evil, a crown of life shall be, and then we shall reign with the king of God, glory eternally. So the crown of victory for those who endure to the end will be ours. My beloved brethren, 
The Bible tells us in Philippians chapter 4, verse 1, that my joy and crown, that beloved brethren, my joy and crown, in this way, stand firm in the Lord. There are many, many scriptures that text tell, encourage us and tell us to stand firm in the Lord. First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 12 says, so if you think that you are standing, if you think that you're standing firm, be careful that you do not fall. Our stability is not dependent on our human strength or energy. Our stability depends on the Lord God himself. So let's ask that God would help us to be able to stand firm, to put on the whole armor of God, to recognize evil, and to know how to avert the, the, the darts of the enemy. I'd like us to pray before we finish. Shall we pray? Help us, O oh Lord, to stand by faith in you. Let your spirit so direct us and control our lives that we will remain firm and immovable even in these evil days that we experience. And help us, Lord, to put on the whole armor of God with its different facets that we have shared this morning. And having done all these things, we want to pray that you will shield us, that you will guard us, that you will protect us in the evil day so that we will be able to stand in your power and in your might. This we pray in Jesus' name. I'd like us to conclude with that song that we sang a bit, <clears throat> Stand Up, Stand Up for Jesus. Stand up, stand up for Jesus, ye soldiers of the cross. Lift high his royal banner, it must not suffer loss. From victory unto victory. Every fall it is Lord it stand up, stand up for Jesus, stand in the the arm of flesh will fail you. You dare not trust your own. Put on the gospel of each peaceful we pray where duty calls or danger be never wanting there. Stand up, stand up, oh Jesus, the strife will not be lost. This day, the noise of battle, the next, the victor song. To those who overcome, the life shall be He with the King of glory shall reign eternally. May God bless you, my brothers and my sisters as we stand firm, as we become overcomers, as we become unshakable, may the Spirit of God be our ever-present guide and protector, and we are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. amen.